Our hope is that Jesus will use our suffering to form us into people of love in order to co-rule with him in the world to come. The hope of Advent is not just about what happens when all our dreams come true, but about what happens when our worst nightmares come true too. That even then, when your suffering is at its most acute, it's not in vain. Now to clarify, because I think this is one of the great false teachings of our age, just my opinion, I am not a theological determinist. I don't think that, quote, everything happens for a reason. I think that's a lie. I think a lot of suffering is senseless. I don't think that, and I hesitate to say this on the internet, but I don't think that God is in control in the sense that he has a secret plan behind all evil in my life. I don't think he, quote, allows evil. You notice I never use that language because that's just code for most people to he, it's not really what he wants, but he kind of wants it and he has a secret plan, so it's like he's the gatekeeper and he will only let into your life what he thinks is good for you. I think he allows free will because God is love. And God is relationship, and love cannot exist outside of relationship, and love cannot exist without choice. And so in the universe that God has chosen to actualize, that the creator has created, where love is the ultimate value, love cannot exist without freedom. And where there is freedom, there is the potential for love, but there is also the potential for sin, which means there is suffering and pain. God allows freedom because God wants love, and the result is love, and the result is pain and suffering. But all followers of Jesus, lots of very smart, God-like followers of Jesus would disagree with what I just said. They're wrong, but they would disagree. No, I'm kidding. My point is, all followers of Jesus from across the theological spectrum, from a seven-point Calvinist to an open theist, or more moderate, from a five-point Calvinist to an Arminian or whatever, all of them agree that wherever suffering comes from, it goes to good if we open it to God. If my reading of the New Testament is right and the meaning of life is to become a person of agape, that life itself is a kind of school of agape where we learn under Rabbi Jesus' tutelage how to grow and mature into people of love who have the character and the capacity to co-rule over the kingdom of God with Jesus upon his return, to take power not to oppress the weak, but to leverage it for the good of all. If that is the meaning and purpose of life, and if love, as defined by Jesus, who said greater love as no one than this to lay down their life for their friends, if love is not tolerance, you do you, if that's actually a very unloving and narcissistic mentality, or if love is not desire, I love you, meaning I want you, or often in our city, I want to have sex with you, if love is not even warm affection, though that is a part of it, but if love is to desire the good of another ahead of your own, no matter the cost or the sacrifice to yourself, then that means that love itself is a form of self-giving. It is the opposite of narcissism, which is why most of what we call romantic love isn't love at all. It's ego and it's lust. It's why the divorce rate is through the roof. Love, then, is giving up your seat on the bus it's getting up in the middle of the night to comfort your child after a bad dream. It's giving away your hard-earned money to those that need it more than you. It's taking on a project for a colleague at work who's stressed out. It's inviting somebody into your home when you'd rather just have it be your family, but they're alone this holiday. If love is self-giving, if that's what love is, then listen, all self-giving is a form of suffering. All of it. Ergo, learning how to suffer well is learning how to love. And the primary way we become people of agape is by suffering. Not by sermons. Not by reading books. I read a lot of books. I'm a little, tiny bit behind on my quota because of 2020, right? Normally about 120, 130 this year. I'm just over 100. I feel really bad about it. But guess what? They have not made me more loving good inspiration, good t teaching and technique, I'm grateful. You don't learn, you don't become a person of love by hearing a sermon or reading a book or even by going to church. Though those things can become spiritual disciplines and that they can open us up to the spirit of God, but the main way that most of us become loving is through suffering. And not just through suffering, but 
As Jean-Pierre de Cassade put it, 17th century Jesuit, brilliant mind, in suffering lovingly. That is to say, with sweetness and consolation, those things that often cause weariness and disgust in this consists sanctity. That is our hope, my friends. Not that nothing bad will happen to us because we're Christians, or that if it does, there's a secret plan behind all of it, but that no matter what happens to us, whether it's from God or from Satan or just our own stupid decisions or just chaos in a world with a global pandemic, whatever happens, we're not alone. God is with us. And if we give him our suffering and our pain and our disappointment and our letdown, God will take all of that and by his spirit give us back transformation. He will grow and mature us into people of love and of joy and of peace and of hope, the kind of people who can one day rule over the kingdom of God with him. He will work all things together for the good of those who are called to his purpose.